consider the following statements okay this uh, the statement the statement gupta period of indian history is considered as a golden age it is just hello good morning aspirants welcome to plotus is today we are going to discuss the topic that was gupta period a golden age or not we always consider that gupta period jo hai wo स्वर्ण युग है भारतीय इतिहास का है ना सर दिस इज अ गोल्डन एज ऑफ इंडियन हिस्ट्री सो लेट अस सी वेदर इट इज अ गोल्डन एज और नॉट व्हाट वी सी दैट इन इंडिया द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पावरफुल स्टेट हु हैड बीन दैट द मौर्यास सो इन द एंशियंट टाइम वी हैड द मॉडर्न एम्पायर वाज द मोस्ट पावरफुल स्टेट हु वाज कंट्रोलिंग ऑलमोस्ट ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट ओके and other important powerful state that will be in the medieval time that will be mughals okay so during the time of akbar and aurangzeb mughal empire was most powerful empire in the world we can say okay so what we see that gupta period was especially a period of from 4th century to 6th century ad so it was a period of around 200 years okay it was a period of around 200 years and these people were ruling from the time called 319 to around 550 550 so almost two century two and half century they were ruling so their main period was from 319 to 467 467 when astrandagup the the last powerful ruler astrandagupt was the last powerful ruler of gupta empire died and then after astrandagup they ruled for about 550 years the unpowerful and un, the weak rulers succeeded this gupta empire okay so why gupta empire is considered as a golden age of indian history so there are some of the features and according to these features we can say that gupta is a uh, golden age of indian history let us have a look on the features okay so what we see uh, these are the features so before uh, the feature we can do one thing we can have a look at a question we can have a look at a question so, uh, please see this question and then we will go into the topic that why gupta is called as a golden age of history so this question that i have prepared is the gupta period of indian history is considered as golden age consider the following statements okay this uh, the statement the statement gupta period of indian history is considered as a golden age it is just to make you confused here and these are the four statements so we have to answer this statement you know that what is correct what is not correct okay so here the question is gupta represented the political unification after 5th century after 5th century especially after the 5th century of mauryas after the 5th century of maurya so the maurya people declined by 185 and gupta was founded in 390 so this is almost 500 years okay in indian history and was highly centralized state and right? mostly highly centralized state uh, gupta period is the only period of indian history when sanskrit literature went on its zenith okay a statement sahi hai ya nahi hai one ashram dham was becoming rigid and women were losing their status okay what about this one and the gupta period witnessed decline of trade and cities so if this statement is true then how can we say gupta period as a period of golden age okay so please see the option option a option b option c and option d so if you are watching the video please comment in the uh, comment box that what is the answer of this question and then uh, we will see in the last that whether you are able to solve a uh, right answer or not okay your option is correct or not we will see it all right so let us have a look whether we should call gupta as as this or not so what we see the most important feature upon which gupta period can be called as the golden age of indian history because there was a political unification of almost the most parts of india after 500 years so maurya will decline by 185 and after that india was disintegrated after maurya the one set of rulers were uh, sung rule for some time kanva rule for very few time then we will have satvanas who will rule for three centuries and liberated in the uh, maharashtra and andhra region so there will be the indogiri indogiri kusan 
Parthians, Satya. So these people will be ruling, and in South India, they rule Pandya, Chola, Chela, Chera, and Chola. So what we are saying between 185 and 319, that period is called as post-modern period. India did not witness the political unification, but for the first time after this, the foundation of Gupta age, we can say that there is a political unification in India. So what is this political unification? So this point number one, we can have a look here, is that so if you see this political unification of India, this region. was initially was made under the control of chandragupta first so chandragupta first was the first important ruler of this dynasty this dynasty was founded by sri gupta in 319 and chandragupta first who was a grandson of sri gupta become king in this years only then after if you see these whole areas these whole areas brought under the control of samundra group so samundra group had captured these all regions the all regions and then they especially the ruler called chandragupt second had captured the region called malwa so malwa was malwa and gujarat malwa and gujarat was captured by Chandragupta II. So we can say that this empire was a uh, witness political unification after 500 years of the decline of Maurya. So we can say this is a golden age. The other important point: this was mostly centralized government. This was mostly centralized government ruling from the top. I will tell you one such examples about the kings of this empire. If you see Samundra group, he had adopted a policy of war and conquest. and v s smith had called him the napoleon of india because he had captured these machines according to the paryad prashasti according to the paryad prashasti inscription it is said that he had defeated 12 south indian rulers 12 south indian rulers were defeated by him and then he had adopted a policy of political conciliation do you know he used to defeat the rulers he used to defeat the rulers and then the states were reinstated towards them they were Asked to pay tribute to Samundra Group, but they were declared to be independent. And independent, that is, they had to do that. So, do you know there were four opponents of Samundra Group? One opponent was the ruler Slain, whose territories were annexed outrightly. Other will be the frontier kings. They were paying tributes. The third are the rulers defeated. They were saying as a tributaries, ruling as a tributaries. And the fourth was the distant kings. They used to send embassies to these persons. Do you know the South East Asian country, Java, Sumatra, and Indonesia? They were paying tributes to Gupta Empire. So this is what we know about Gupta Empire. So if we see, so we have seen that Gupta Empire had a political unification. It was a highly centralized state. Other important thing is that the Sanskrit literary work. Do you know in Indian history, if ever Sanskrit had a golden age? If any period of history, if the Sanskrit has a golden age, this age, this age especially represents the Gupta period. So no other age of Indian history was there where a lot of works have been done in the writings. Okay. So what you see in in case of the Sanskrit literature, you find all of these writings were written by a time of Gupta. Do you know all Mahabharata, Ramayana, Manu Smriti? All these things were written in this time only. Kali Das, a very prominent Sanskrit scholar and poet, was from this period only. He had written the book called Abhijyan Sakuntalam, Meghdoot, Bikram Agni Chatramitra. Okay, and then uh, especially if you remember the Malvika Agni Mitra and all. So all the writings, Raghuvans and all, were written by this time only. We have a scholar like uh, Sudra Ka, we have a scholar Bhas, we have Bisakha Dat who have written a uh, Mudra Raksas, we have Hari Sen who have written Paryat Prasasti. Okay. we have arevard arevard brahmir and brahmagupta all these three famous astronomer and mathematicians who have written their writings in the sanskrit world so sanskrit had been a very prominent language in the time of gupta and sanskrit flourished from one place to other place so because of the vast number of sanskrit literary traditions followed in the gupta period we can say that gupta period is a golden period of indian history the other point is that that we should focus here is the stone sculpture and architecture 
Guptas were very famous that is in the stone sculpture and architecture. Do you know Ajanta caves and Bagh caves were made during the time of Gupta also. So let us have a look on the caves which were made. So this is a Bagh cave that represents a hundred that is from especially in the situated in the Madhya Pradesh. In this cave we have all the caves are Bihar. Rang Mahal cave is the importance and we have a mural paintings. Mural paintings that is a wall paintings are represented from the Bagh caves. So caves were made, caves were made in these times only. Other important caves which were made earlier also but completed and happened during the time of Gupta and this is Ajanta caves which represent Buddhism. So Ajanta caves is the most important example of sculptures apart from Ajanta caves what we see they have temple architectures also. So Hindu temples were made at this time, especially if you go to Nashan Kutara region, a Parvati temple is made. They have made a Vitarla temple in Kanpur. They have the Saptar temple at Deolhar in Madhya Pradesh. And then we have a, in the Sarvan Vela, there is a very big statues of Jain Tirthankar. Where, okay, in the Sarvan Vela is a place where Chan Gupta Maurya had went from Patliputra and he had adopted Salekhana. Salekhana was a uh, starvation till death. Okay, so this is what we know. We have a Ranakpur temple in that the Ranakpur temple that belongs to Lord Adinath, and then we have a Dilwara temple at Mount Abu. So we can say that in the art and architecture, the Guptas were so much powerful, so much powerful. Okay, so what we have seen, Guptas can be called as a period of golden age because of these factors. Okay, and what is the factor? The factor is that it was a political unification, mostly highly centralized state, Sanskrit literary works, stone sculpture and architecture. Other important point about the Gupta is the science and technology. So science and technology was flourishing during the time of Gupta. In terms of science and technology, the most important thing is the mathematics, medicine and astronomy. Mathematics, medicine and astronomy. Astronomy. Let us have a look on the these things of the Gupta period. Okay. So if we discuss, then what do you find? That Guptas were very powerful in these things. Right? They are very powerful in these things. In the mathematics, we know three persons were there. The one such persons were Arevat. Arevat will be the one, then other will be Brahma group, and third person will be Brahma Bihar. So these three persons are belonging to Gupta period only. The Arevat is the one person who had invented zero and he is the first person to use a decimal system. He is the person who is behind the origin of algebra. Okay. And he had also calculated the pi. Okay. So all these three persons were also involved into the astronomy. Okay. He is the person who said that what is the distance between this one. So what we see that these three persons are very important in these rounds. Okay. Arevat is the first person who said the sun, the sun is stationary and the earth revolve around the sun. So this is what we come to know and Brahm group has written Pancha Siddhant. He followed about especially the writings of, uh, sorry, Brahm Bihir wrote the Pancha Siddhant and Brahm group told that the law of gravitation. The law of gravitation which was especially uh, brought up by Newton in the 19th century. This was already done in the 5th century AD in the Gupta period. So we can say from the science and technology point of view, Gupta period had been a period of golden age. Do you know? So because of the science and technology, literature, art and sculptures and the political unification, we say that Gupta period is a period of golden age. Other important point is that, other important point is that here is that what was there which do not say that Gupta period is a golden age. Everything has pros and cons. Okay. So these are the main points we can be utilized in order to say that Gupta period is a golden age. Other important point is that these are the four factors which will tell you that Gupta period was not a golden page for everyone. Do you know in this time there is a decline of trade and commerce. So Greco-Roman, Greco-Roman trade had declined. Greco-Roman trade had declined by this time and the people were now dependent on Southeast Asia. South East Asia. This is one factor. Other important, the trade and declare decline which is started from Kusan period, there was a urban decay. Urban decay means there is a decline of cities. 
so there is a decline of cities in the time of gupta all the city will be losing its importance because now trade and commerce is declining so city is dependent on trade and commerce only so trade and commerce will also decline along with the city the city will be declining other important the status of caste was not good var ashram dham was flourishing at this time why guptas were vasya from origin guptas were vasya and in order to preserve that they are from higher class they were uh, promoting brahman dominance brahman dominance was being promoted here and due to this brahman dominance the caste system become rigid in this time caste system become rigid how so since they were the vasyas they they were marrying uh, rajputs uh, they were marrying sorry kshatriya uh, and whatever sense since they have to show their status high that is why they were Brah- they were patronizing brahmans at large number and they were donating land grant they were donating tax free land grant to brahmans okay so this is the main system the caste system was flourishing and this become rigid at this time this become the varn ashram dhan become compulsory at this time the status of women was decreasing the status of women was decreasing at this time how the swayamvar was disbanded swayamvar was disbanded they were not entitled to go outside of their uh, house work okay and this is one system sati partha system was flourishing at this time we have a archaeological inscription of sati partha system in this time okay so these are the main examples which is about the women status was decreasing at this time so what we see so status of women status of caste and women were not good in this time then there is a rise of feudalism so there was a rise of feudalism what was happening so it is because of the tax free land grant tax free land grant do you know what will happen here the thing that is going to happen here is that the king will be granting tax free land grant the brahmins who will get tax free land grant they will become powerful on that land because they don't need to pay taxes so they will be uh, dominating the state when the kings are weak so after the death of astandigat all astan astandigupt all the kings were not powerful all the kings were not powerful so now these landlords who are becoming because of this tax free land ground this will lead to the rise of feudalism in another video i will make a, a short video uh, when we, we in which we will discuss about the feudalism we will discuss whether the india witness a feudalism in feudal feudalism or not okay so in that video we we'll discuss about feudalism so for the now time being uh, this is the thing so what happened there are four important things decline of trade and commerce urban decay status of caste and women and the rise of feudalism so these are the main things so these are the main aspect these are the main aspect which can be used to define that gupta period was a golden age these four aspects can be defined that no gupta period period was not golden age for everyone okay so i hope i was able to make you understand on this topic so if you remember this topic now if you remember this question so can you solve we have just discussed that gupta represent the political unification after five centuries in indian history and it was a highly centralized state so this statement will be true gupta period is the only period of indian history when sanskrit literature when on its zenith yes it is true varn ashram dharm was becoming rigid and the women were losing their status we have just discussed it hai na so this statement will be also true gupta period witnessed the decline of trade and cities we have just discussed now so these all four statements will be true so answer will be all of the above okay so in another video we will have another topic on ancient india please feel free to comment uh, whatever you want me to make videos on that and i will be making videos on any topics of indian and world history according to your demand which will be relevant to the upsc civil service examination prelims and mains all right student so thank you so much we'll see you in another video